It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today, we're gonna test the Fuji 10 to 24 millimeter lens for use, price, and performance, and give you kind of my impressions on it. Not a full review, but my impressions having picked it up, used this week. Talking about the Fuji 10 to 24 millimeter lens. It's awesome, I'm using it to film right now. I got it to film uh, for YouTube videos, but I've also been out taking some photos with it. So we're gonna take a look at those and kind of give you my first impressions using this lens. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. Let's go. Uh, we're out here at Marina Park, uh, somewhere over there. And there's some water over there. And uh, we're just gonna be doing a little bit of sunrise photography. The sky does not look that dramatic. It's hard to tell, but it doesn't look like there's clouds. So maybe, uh, you know, a dramaless sunrise, but is there ever such a thing? I don't know. Pablo's over here, and uh, we're about to get it on. Uh, let me edit that. We're about to take some photos. <laughs> it was a great experience to get out there in the morning and put this lens through its paces and to see how it did with uh, photography, long exposure, and for um, some video. So let's take a look. All right, what you cannot see behind me is there's a lighthouse right here. We're at Community, uh, Marina Community Park. The water's off to my right. Way back there you can see the, uh, the lights of Newport, the buildings in Newport, and it's really <laughs> cool. So um, I composed a shot, kind of horizontal lans landscape, to test this lens. Yes, today we are going to test the 10-24 uh, to 24 Fuji lens and tell you is it a good value for use, price, and performance? Those are my three criteria. I drove out to Menifee, met a cool guy, and uh, he sold me this lens, which he bought for real estate photography, but he hasn't been using very much. I bought it for a vlogging lens, but I thought, you know, we're doing some sunrise photography. What better lens than a wide angle lens for some cool landscape shots? And so there's a lighthouse behind me, this is shot number one. And so one of the things I'm picking up is, is this lens good for astrophotography? Because when I opened up uh, the aperture to uh, F4, which is lowest it could go, I started to see the, the stars in the viewfinder. And so I think this might be a great lens for astrophotography. So let's see. So one of the things I want to test is low light capability. I'm just filming. It's about 5.30 a.m., 5.20 a.m. And out of Newport, going out to do some sunrise photography. And this is the low light. I mean, there's really only street lights. If I turn the ISO down, this is about ISO 800. But that's the low light performance of this lens on the Fuji X-T4. Um, but let's just crank it back up to 2000, shall we? Now this is a wide angle lens, so the stabilization with the wide angle should be pretty good, a good combination. All right, so, so far impressions of the 10 to 24 lens is it's very sharp, it's very responsive, it lets in a lot of light. Like for photographing out here, I got starlight. Uh, I could uh, manually focus on the stars because the lens was bright enough. Um, it's very sharp, even for like 30 second exposures, you zoom in and it looks like the detail is there. It's, it's amazing so far. And um, I would go as far as to say it seems as sharp as the, 15 to th the RF 15 to 35. Um, I think the difference would be, it seems like obviously that's an f2.8, so there's a little bit of low light capability that the RF lens has over this. And I think the autofocus works a little bit better. Um, I don't see the eye tracking working. All right, everybody, I don't know if my focus is working can't really tell I'm looking in the in the, uh, <laughs> the flip out screen I don't see the eye tracking working but the face tracking seems to be working I think it's in focus uh, we'll see but so far uh, it's been it's been great out here all right let's get on with it all right I want to address something that um, I think is a tendency uh, of mine on YouTube videos and that is to rave about a camera or to rave about a lens to talk good about it um, I don't find myself naturally inclined to put things down or to complain um, because after all I do research and I buy products and I use them and if they're really really disappointing then I will talk about the negatives um, but I think I tend to 
pump things up or sell them because it's fun and people like to hear good things. They like to get excited about, oh, maybe I should buy this. And some of that's part of the kind of trappings of the YouTube culture. Um, but I do want to talk honestly about the Fuji um, 10 to 24 lens and the X-T4. Um, and that is that there is a downside that I've noticed and that is uh, the rolling shutter effect that um, I see when I'm filming uh, on the wide angle lens or actually on the 23 mil lens. So it's, it's a problem with the X-T4. And I know if you set it on a tripod and you're not moving the camera, you don't get that effect. So I know how to avoid it. Um, but I do expect to vlog with this camera, so I have to think about how to avoid that negative effect because I honestly, I don't like that. Um, that being said, I want to separate this talk of the Fuji 10-24 to 24 lens into two parts. One is photography and two is videography. And primarily, I'm going to be talking about vlogging. I've done another video uh, taking it this out to vlog in LA when we were doing some landscape, urban landscape photography. So you can see that on my channel. Um, but I'll say that when I filmed with this lens, um, trying to show the marina, trying to um, walk and talk, I, I was disappointed and bothered by the, the rolling shutter. So again, I said I know how to avoid that. That's to put it on a tripod to stop the motion or to be very careful and deliberate about those, um, those movements and, and to take more care creating the camera mo um, motion. All right, so that being said, um, I would say I'm at this point, I give the lens. It's it's a great lens, it's sharp. Uh, the other thing, okay, there's two issues really with the lens, is that I see in, not so much in the face, I see it's sharp in the face, but in the background I see a little bit of hunting. So the background will get a little bit sharper and a little more bokeh and blur, a little bit sharper, a little bit of uh, bokeh and blur. I don't think you'll be able to tell that. I think you can see it when it's searching for the eye autofocus, which is honestly not that often. Um, I did it a little bit. Uh, there's a, a place in this video where it's a little soft, um, but that was super low light. Um, I'm out at 5.30 in the morning. So I, I think maybe that's to be expected and that's fair. But um, I would say overall, I give the, the lens maybe a little bit above average. I, I'm happy with it. Um, I paid $615 for it used. There is a version two coming out, I think right about now, and it's weather sealed. And that's the big difference. Um, the lens is $1,000. I think it's a good value at $1,000. It's an excellent value at $600. And compared to the major lens that I have experience with in this um, realm is the RF 15 to 35, which goes for like $22.99. I have to say I'm delighted with this lens. Just you know, the cost factor is an important thing to consider. But overall, this lens, I'm gonna say I do recommend it. It's excellent for photos. I'm gonna highly endorse it for photos. I'm say, well, right now it's as good as I can find uh, for the the XT4, um, the X series or X mount for um, video. But I'm I'm hoping maybe a firmware upgrade or something addresses the rolling shutter and maybe they'll improve the auto focus as well. Right now, that's it for me. I thank you so much for joining me on this video. If you like this video, if you found it helpful at all, if in the information was of use to you, please hit the like button and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate you. I depend on people like you to leave comments. You don't know how much it means to me when people leave a comment. I really feel like the community here is one of the best things um, about enjoying photography is collaborating and communicating and um, connecting with other people. All right, until next time. See ya.